So this is a solidarity event and we're gathered here in support of and with gratitude toward the Native Americans who have traveled to North Dakota from all corners of the country and the continent. Members of some 280 different tribes where they've set up an encampment on the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation to say no to the Dakota Access Pipeline and further to admonish us of what we, all of us, in our hearts already know. Water, not oil, is life. Three representatives of that voice, that Native American voice, members of the Penobscot Nation, Elder Kathy Paul is with us. Kathy, will you stand up? Over here. And June Sapio, who recently returned from North Dakota. There's June. And Dawn Neptune Adams. Dawn, will you acknowledge yourself? There she is. They have traveled all the way down from the Bangor, northern Maine area to be with us. And they have not come alone. With all the other native women and men who've traveled with them, please raise your hands and identify yourselves and let us give you at least a little applause. There are today eight allied organizations co-sponsoring today's event, and I just want to give them a shout out. First, 350 Maine. My name is Lee Chisholm, by the way, and I'm from 350 Maine. Second, Sierra Club, Maine. Third, the Maine People's Alliance. Fourth, the Food and Water Watch. Fifth, Community Water Justice. Six, Environment Maine. Seven, the Southern Maine Workers Center. And lastly, you'll see them in the blue shirts, Protect South Portland. Now, I'm going to turn the mic over to members of the Penobscot Nation. They're going to speak for a time and likely lead us in song and ceremony. And after that, I'll come back to the mic with a few asks, surrounded by some parting thoughts of our own I'm from 350 Maine. Thank you. And I think uh, it's Kathy, Kathy Paul, an elder of the tribe, who will speak first. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here. And thank you for standing with us today. Nibi Bamizawagan, water is life. It belongs to all of us. No one can own it. It's free flowing. And we want it to stay that way, and we want it to stay pure. Um, I could talk here all night, but I just want to say a few things that's really important for me. I am working with, uh, to, against the Juniper Ridge expansion up in Old Town. I will lay down before they expand that place. I will lay down. We, I am a protector of the water and the land. All my people are. So we will stay up there and there will be no expansion. And we're having a public hearing October 18th and 19th. We have a Facebook page, no mega dump expansion. So please visit us and come and support us if you can. Thank you, Waliwan Gazelmo. Next, Don will speak. Kwe Kwe. Let me try that again. Kwe Kwe, can you hear me out there? Kwe means hello in our language. Aguanu Day means welcome. And to Louise Don, my name is Don. Palite Ama Banawabskewi, I am proud to be Penobscot. I'm happy you're all here today to stand with our relatives and with us, the indigenous people of this land. I usually start out any talk I do by uh, 
talking about the um, prophecies and the stories that our ancestors have given to us. And if anybody, um, if anybody knows anything about maybe the Anishinaabe prophecy that says they will come to a fork in the road, one path will lead to greed and destruction and a continuation of what has been harming our Mother Earth, and the other path will lead to another paradigm, a lighting of the eighth fire, a time when the human family unites as one and returns Mother Earth to her original splendor. We are in these times. We also have a story from our own ancestors, our Penobscot ancestors, about this black snake. And I'd like to share that with you because you might not have heard it. I share it at all the, all the film discussions we do um, for our documentary about the Penobscot River. I'd also like to talk to you about that. But first, the story of the black snake. This was written about in a book called Life and Traditions of the Red Man by Joseph Nicolar in 1893. And the story is Meme and Gluskab. Gluskab is our cultural hero. And the stories we have of him are passed down from our ancestors. Gluskab went on an adventure long, long ago. And when he came back, he was paddling his birch bark canoe up the river. The further upstream he went, the more he noticed that the water was black and it had a foul stench. Very curious as to what could be causing this fouling of the water, he paddled up river and came upon a, an enormous black snake. Just as he was noticing the snake, the snake was noticing him. And as he paddled furiously toward the snake to take it on, the snake turned and threatened him menacingly. All of a sudden, Meme, the pileated woodpecker, flew between the man and the giant serpent. She fluttered and danced in the air, trying to figure out how best to defuse the situation. Gluskab had a moment to wonder how he would defeat this black snake in a birch bark canoe with nothing but one arrow and a bird for an ally. Meme landed on the bow of his canoe and said, don't worry, I'll help you. I'll show you where to aim and bring your arrow back to you when it has flown. So Gluskab took aim and he missed. Meme brought back the arrow and said, be quick now, aim closer to the tail, the narrowest part of the tail. Six times Gluskab aimed at the black snake and six times he missed. On the seventh try, Meme flew at great danger to herself at the serpent and pointed with her beak at the weak spot in the serpent's tail where Gluskab should aim. And the arrow found its mark. After Gluskab had broken the backbone of the snake, the water filled with blood. Meme suggested to Gluskab that perhaps he could gift her with a token of appreciation for her help. So he dipped his arrow in the blood and the water and he touched it to her head. When this was done, the water returned to its pristine state and Meme had a glorious crown of red, a mark of true friendship. And she said, we came into this world as friends and as friends, we will live in it. How's that for a prophecy? People ask what they can do to help. And the biggest thing that you can do to help is to bear witness. As far as I know, I don't watch mainstream media, so, uh, but from what I hear, this isn't really being covered in the media. And when it is being covered, it is not in a positive light. So if you are a Facebook person like me, you can follow the Sacred Stone Camp and the Red Warrior Camp. You can look up Brenda Norell of, of uh, Censored News. She provides up-to-the-minute updates. 
And uh, uh, Govinda Dalton has been broadcasting a radio broadcast directly from the camp. We can also insist that our academic institutions divest from oil and the fossil fuel industries. And we can insist that those that we conspire with, the groups, the big green groups that we, we um, do actions with, we can insist that they do not um, benefit in any way or promote candidates who take corporate money and money from big oil and gas. And with that, Nialak, that is all. Wuliwini, thank you. Thank you, Don. It's wonderful. June. Quay, my name is June Sapio. I'm from Penobscot Indian Nation. And uh, I'm here in solidarity with Standing Rock. Um, I just spent eight days on the ground at, at Standing Rock and um, it's very active there. There's a lot going on um, inside the camp. And uh, there's a lot of prayer. There's a lot of ceremony. So uh, I'm a little bit emotional from my trip out there and uh, being back here. Uh, so bear with me. <laughs> I, uh, I plan on uh, going back to Standing Rock on Wednesday for another week to bring our supplies out there. And um, I think that a lot of people want to go to Standing Rock as well, but don't have the opportunity. But what we need from everybody that can't go to Standing Rock is just prayer and, and words. Like, get it out there, because the media is not covering this. And um, they, what part they are covering is in favor of big oil. So we're not getting our word out there. And we just need everybody to speak up and talk on your Facebook, on your Twitter, on your Instagram, and send it out there and let people know what is happening in Standing Rock. Um, and I just want to thank everybody for being here. This is about water, this is about Mother Earth, and this is about treaties for the Native people. These treaties are continually broken time and time again, and it needs to stop. And the only way that we can take care of that is to have solidarity and allies and you're our allies, and I honor every one of you for being here. Thank you. Thank you for being here. There is only so much bleeding of this earth that we can do before she implodes on us. We need to take care of her, and we need to give back. We have to stop taking, or we're not going to have an earth to live on anymore. Thank you. We're going to sing you all the welcome song for joining us here today.
going to sing one of the water songs for you that we do in our ceremony. Thank you. story image I would like to share with you. Imagine, in the beginning all the creatures received gifts from the Creator. First, the colors. To the blue jay the Creator gave a rakish blue coat, blue and white. To the scarlet macaw, eye-dazzling reds and greens. To the monarch butterfly, an orange as bright as the sunrise, interspersed with midnight black. But when he came to water, waiting patiently, the Creator said, I am sorry, water. I have no color for you. Next, all the special flavors and tastes to the cinnamon bush, a tongue zinging spicy bark, to the delicate orchid flower, the sweet vanilla bean, to a brave little tree, the pungent lemon fruit. But when he came to water, waiting patiently, the creator said, I'm sorry, water. I have no flavor or taste for you. Next, the scents. To the lilac bush, a fragrance as soft as the spring. To the lavender flower, a smell redolent with beauty. To the wild island rose, a scent like no other. But when he came to water, the Creator said, I'm sorry, water, I have no scent or special smell for you. And last, the Creator gave out a host of extraordinary forms, magnificent shapes and forms to the eagle, wide wings to carry him high above the earth, to the salmon, a sleek, smooth shape to render him a king of swimmers, to the cheetah, strong, sinewy legs to let him run like no other being in the world. But when he came to water, Waiting patiently, the Creator said, I am sorry, water. I have no special shape or form for you. Whatever vessel shall hold you, be it jug or bowl or stream bed or lake bed, 
That is the shape you shall wear. Of all the creatures, water was dearest to the Creator's heart. And seeing her there, standing giftless before him, the Creator spoke again. Dear water, since you are taking for yourself no special color of your own, no special flavor or scent or smell of your own, not even a shape that has not been given to you by others, in taking for yourself no thing, you and you alone have gained the power to give life to everything. Water, you are life. The water thanked the Creator, and he went on then to flow everywhere, on the earth, in the earth, and above the earth in the clouds. And not only there, but also in the blood of the body, the sap of the plant, the tears of the eye. But water today is under assault. And the brave and passionate souls who are now encamped at the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation in North Dakota are sounding the alarm. They who took with such unmatched care of all took care of all nature here on the continent of America for thousands of years, have risen in unity now as the conscience of a country. Our mere 150-year addiction to fossil fuels, once fed by easy oil and gas extraction, has turned now to extreme oil and gas extraction. And that extreme oil and gas extraction is abusing water and attacking it in the earth, where in tens of thousands of well sites, hundreds of millions of gallons of water are mixed with toxic chemicals and sand and then shot under pressure like a giant hypodermic needle into the earth, putting at risk our groundwater. And that extreme oil and gas extraction is attacking and abusing water on the earth. If, for example, the Dakota Access Pipeline is built, 17,000 gallons of oil every single minute will be coursing through almost 1,200 miles of snaking metal pipes. And pipelines leak at an astounding rate. We know that putting at risk not only the Missouri River, the drinking water of the Standing Rock Sioux, but countless rivers and streams throughout the nation. Last and most seriously of all, that extreme oil and gas extraction is attacking and abusing water above the earth. For when we burn the oil and gas that we're sending through those pipes, we add day by day to an already intolerable burden of carbon pollution in the air and in the sea. As many of you know, the Gulf of Maine alone has been warming at a record pace, crashing the shrimp and blue mussel populations and the codfish, putting at risk our whole lobster fishery and our clam flats. The oceans of the earth are very much endangered. And so we stand here today in solidarity with the indigenous peoples of North America, grateful for their voice. That is the voice of humanity's conscience. That is the voice of our children and the children of our children who are waiting to be born. Take care of our water. Our water is our life. We have some, we can do a great deal, of course. We are a power, a force. And we have some immediate asks for you today. I'm going to call up to the microphone Taryn Hallweaver, uh, Executive Director of the Climate End of Maine's People's Alliance. And she, nearby, will give you the first ask. Good morning, everyone. My name is Taryn, and I'm going to share the options for financially supporting the very courageous water protectors out at the Sacred Stone Camp and here in Maine. Thank you. 
Um, if people were given a flyer, there are options on these flyers to support the Sacred Stone Camp at sacredstonecamp.org. And you can go online, give $20, $50, $100, money's needed for a legal defense fund, for supplies out at the camp. And right now we're going to pass around uh, two buckets. And can those get lifted up? Thanks. We've got two buckets that are going to get passed around for cash donations for Maine's courageous water defenders, the Wabanaki. They're renting a trailer, driving 36 hours out to the Sacred Stone Camp on Wednesday, and all of this money will go directly to the Wabanaki for joining this historic resistance. Um, thanks for, for making a, a powerful statement by putting your money behind this. Thank you, Darren. Is Sarah Lachance here? Sarah, the second ass. Thank you. I want to thank you all again for taking the time to come out today and show our support that we will no longer tolerate Native American rights being stepped on in any way during our time here. And I also want to remind us of these amazing women that are standing behind me. They took a long journey down from Penobscot Nation to be with us today. And every day they fight for our air and our water and our children's future. And I just want to thank them from the bottom of my heart for all the amazing work they do with every breath they take. So a couple of just last minute reminders of things to come. And please, as that donation bucket makes its way across, please, if you can, give today or give online. That money we're going to hand right over to these amazing women today so that they can use it in ways that they know better than we do in terms of how to fight this fight. Um, so what's happening next depends on you as much as it depends on me and the collective we. So here's a couple of ideas. In the coming weeks, when we head up, some of us, to Common Ground Fair, we're hoping that maybe we can pull together another action like this. It's shaping now. It's in sort of the organic, creative phase. So keep looking up on social media with all the different coalitions that are standing here today. Watch for it on Facebook. Announcements will be coming forth if we can pull something together that once again shows that we are united, we are rising, and we are not going away. Um, before I forget, real quick, Bob Klotz running around here somewhere with the Hawaiian t-shirt. Right there, um, he did an, a great job this past week doing lots of organizing, helping pull everyone together and did a, just a lot of the behind the scenes stuff and so I just want to give a quick shout out to him. And he's also um, offered to help look at all the pictures and help us get them off to various sites. Obviously, please post them on all your social media sites, spread them to all your friends, but uh, walk up to him if you took some great shots and figure out how to upload some of those different pictures um, to him so we can help keep spreading and spreading the word as you do too. Thank you, Sarah. 350 May. And I'm now going to let June and friends close it. This is a prophecy that we're living right now. And we, can, and we can turn this around if, if we stand strong. If everybody stands together, we can be heard. I, I can guarantee you, and I know Don said it, that we, that we can win this. And I know we can. So thank you, Kachi Willy Wani.